Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Thea Sander from Composites United Switzerland, and I welcome you to the web seminar, Conductivity, Durability, and Reduced Weight in Composites with Graphene Nanotubes, presented to you by Alberto De Simone, Technical Sales Manager for Composites at PU at Oxial Group, a web seminar from the series uh, CU Member Innovations. A few points first, the, the cameras and the microphones are switched off during uh, the event by default. Please also leave them switched off. Questions can be asked uh, at the end of the presentation via hand raising or the chat function. Questions in the chat will be answered right away from the OXIAL team. Please use the raise hand function in the menu bar below under reactions if you want to ask your questions verbally at the end of the presentation. Uh, we will then activate your microphone. As already announced in the email, the web seminar will be recorded and subsequently made available on the YouTube channel of Composites United. And now I would like to hand over the screen to Roberto De Simone and wish you much pleasure. Thank you. Roberto, stage is yours. Yes, thank you. Well, welcome everybody. As um, the good introduction made by Teo, my name is Roberto De Simone. I'm the technical sales manager for composites and the polyurethane application at Oxial Europe. Basically, as a the technician because I'm a chemical engineer and uh, I've got several experience and composite skills just um, for my previous job experience. As Theo mentioned before, we have the honor and the pleasure to have with us my colleague Dimitri, who is the head of polymer materials, which will be able to reply to all your questions during the presentation in a written form just in the chat. Let me start with, um, with the webinar. So just a brief content of what we are going to discuss today. Basically, I'm going to introduce you what is graphene nanotubes and how to handle and to get the best performance with this material and how graphene nanotubes can help you in your sustainable path for composite part. Later on, we are going to focus on the main va value proposition we are going to put on the market, like electrical conductivity performances and enhancement of mechanical properties. I'm going to share with you some recent R&D result about this last topic because it's, it's important to remark that we are in a process ongoing with mechanical reinforcement. And at the end of the presentation, I'm going to share with you some um, information about our company, Oxial. So the main value proposition graphene nanotubes can bring compared with the standard composite material. First of all, our main value is providing electrical conductivity. So you can try, you can get out using nanotubes a permanent antistatic and conductive properties while it's possible to keep or even enhance mechanical properties. But mechanical properties and hot topic for us above all for, um, for, um, for composite manufacturers. So now we are focused our effort to bring some additional value on top of electrical conductivity. And our recent result show us how it's possible to enhance flexural properties, mechanical properties like flexural strength and modulus, interlaminar shear strength and fracture toughness just to increase the operational lifetime and even the, um, the, the general behavior of the composite part in their life cycle. Let me briefly introduce you what is graphene nanotubes. Graphene nanotubes are a thin tubes, like a sort of one sheet of graphene wrapped up in a cylinder shape. It means that the thickness is just one atom. The inner diameter is in between 1.6 plus minus 0.4 nanometer and the length should be between 5 and 10 microns. What is important to remark here is that the graphene tubal, which is our brand name produced by Oxial, are the only industrial scale produced graphene nanotubes with an affordable price on the market. As we know, materials at all the stages of their lifespan from the extraction to recovery um, gives a massive contribution to the gas, to greenhouse gas emission. 
And even uh, what we know that in the next 40 years, this production will be double just because the growing of the population. And on the other side, even material and the production equipment will not use at their full potential. So one, one question for us and for companies like, how Tubal can give a support in the sustainable path of composite manufacture. We evaluated the three different possible value in this uh, sustainable path and sustainable policy. First of all is the product value. We are going to get the weight reduction with the using of Tubal, obviously anti-static and conductive performances. And because the material should be durable, it, we are going to increase operational lifetime. This value brings immediately a business value for our prospect and customer because they can increase their sales and market coverage and accordingly some cost reduction. At the end of the day, thanks to Tubal and thanks to the extreme loading level to very different properties I'm going to talk about later on, we can get a less environmental impact just because your material could be more energy efficient with the less impact and generally speaking just to decrease the CO2 em em emission. That's why Thanks to Tubal, you can gain a sort of additional sustainable performance on top of what you are doing just to accomplish all the, how to say, the environmental requirement. Because obviously, you are going to get less material, so less it's bad, do better with less. We are going to, to be more and energy efficient and to reduce the gas emissions. So you are going to reduce the energy consumption and CO2 and carbon footprint. And obviously you are going to extend the durability of your material. So your material should be with a good mechanical performance or should be more durable. That's why at the end, Tubal may enable you to get a high performance composite with a reduced environmental impact. Just to um, one of the other question we are facing to, uh, with our customer, with our prospect, uh, with our partners is how is possible to use a tubal and to handle tubal on industrial scale. Just to simplify this approach, Oxial design a concentrate where tubal is predispersed in a in a carrier which is compatible with all the with all the different target system, and in this case, we are talking about mainly for thermostat tracing, like epoxy, polyester, polyurethane, acrylic, and stuff like that. Just to get very important benefit: a permanent and stable resistivity. We can keep on even enhance mechanical properties. On top of this combination of properties, you can get even some range of colors. But what is important value here that you are going to use Nantub in your with your own equipment in your own standard process without any changing. Our R&D center, and I'm going to, to talk about our Tuba Research Center later on, can support you in this development just uh, and taking care of your own formulation, the optimization of your own formulation. So let's jump now in the main value we are going to propose on the market like electrical conductivity performances. This, this graph can make a sort of comparison between the main, um, the main uh, additives you are going to get on the market for um, electrical conductivity properties, like liquid and static agent, carbon black, and obviously have a graphene. You can the graphene additives. You can talk about which positive and negative effect you can get out using those kind of additives. The first one is just the carbon black. With carbon black, you can get a full range of resistivity. Even this resistivity and conductivity is permanent. But obviously, you are going to experience some drawback because of, you can experience um, a lack of mechanical properties. No color is possible. Consider that the range of loading level should be between 4 and 10 per weight percent. So it's just everything should be black. And even the production uh, facilities is a bit dusty and a bit dirty. Ammonium salt or just liquid and static agent on top. On the contrary, I would say you can get the clean production. You can get even um, a color and uh, some, uh, how to say, good mechanical properties, but you never will get a full range of resistivity and the permanent conductivity. 
Only with two ball, you are able to balance all these properties with a full range of permanent and stable resistivity and clean production. Because as I mentioned before, our serious tubal matrix where tubal is totally embedded in a carrier, you will never experience this dusty or dirty uh, facility side. Keep mechanical properties where it's not possible to improve and even some color range are possible. This, ta this table can give you some sort of wrap up of the main added values you can get up with, uh, with Tubal, the extremely working dosage level, the full range of resistivity, the impact and the how to enhance mechanical properties, a very, how to say, comprehensible uh, um, influence on the rheology and acceptable viscosity impact, the possibility to get opportunity to, to get different color, cleaning uh, production and uh, even resistivity is totally independent of humidity and you can get this stable and this resistivity is stable over time. On top of that as a combination of electrical resistivity mechanical performances you can even with uh, with uh, and mainly with antistatic effect can get some different kind of range color. Obviously you need to optimize your formulation maybe Sometimes you can include in your formulation like some three or five weight percent of titanium dioxide as a white agent. But the important thing that the extreme loading, the extremely low loading level enable to get some range of color, light color or dove color. It depends on your final resistivity target. Let me jump now to the industrial application in our range, in our portfolio in, for, for our customer. The first case is just uh, filament winding uh, um, technology. Fiberglass made with um, fiberglass pipes as tank produced by filament windings for different kinds of application for transportation and storage of the hazardous material, pipes for mining application, chemical facilities. And such pipes need to, to get this level of antistatic or even conductive effect. What is important just to compare with, with only 0.5 weight percent of tubal matrix, which means 0.05 weight percent of tubal but this is our active material, you can get a sort of different kind of ben key benefit, like permanent and um, stable antistatic properties without hot spot. Resistivity is totally independent from humidity, and you can keep or even enhance your mechanical properties. Another example is just the protrusion or hand layup technology. You are, we are going to use this kind of technology to manufacture the gratings for different kinds of industrial application and even the cable trays in the top right, in the bottom right uh, slides for the ATEX zone. Even in this case, just a, just a, 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 a small comparison, the six weight percent of the conductive carbon black was replaced by only 0.2 weight percent of tubal matrix 204, which is our grade for vinylester and polyester resin. And the key benefits are really standing like permanent stable and weight, uh, permanent and stable antistatic properties with a value between zero, 10 power 6, 10 power 9 ohm square, just um, a surface resistivity, a wide range of colors we can get out, and even no negative effect on mechanical properties. Third, another example is just the SMC composite based on polyester compound. SMC part um, are a big demand for different kinds of transportation boxes, boxes for electronic equipment, and all of them needs to be antistatic or conductive. Even in this case, 68% of conductive carbon black was replaced by only 0.28% of tubal matrix. And in this case, the beneficial are more or less the same. This, these, uh, these antistatic properties are totally stable and permanent you can get some different kind of color and even adding two ball, you, you will get no uh, effect on your flame retardancy agent. So there is no conflict in between. Last, last case is just um, one of our top uh, applications so far, it's just the antistatic polyester gel coat or mole coat which you use it for different kinds of static um, sensitive equipment, some industrial fans, some nice, uh, we were some, some blades for the wind turbine, and even for children's lights. In this case, 
um, um, in this case, the antistatic effect is really relevant and uh, the five to eight to eight percent of conductive carbon black was replaced with only 0.2 percent weight percent of tubal matrix 204 to get this high range of resistivity between temp hour 5 temp hour 8 ohm square and even in this case you can keep your site as i mentioned before totally clean without carbon dust and for the very low viscosity impact you have to option not only the brush application but even the spray application are possible let's move now on the mechanical reinforcement properties which are our current main goal and focus from the last year to the next one so we know that crack propagation for composite part is a crucial issue. So a crack obviously will propagate in order to lower the total energy, energy of the system. So just to uh, what we experienced so far is just to fill our system, our raising system, in order to reduce the crack propagation. And we observe some beneficial effect in two different, uh, how to say, absorbing mechanisms. The first one is just the nanotube pullout, but even the skeleton, the 3D network, which um, nanotubes is able to build inside the hasmati. There is a sort of continuous redirection of the crack, so they can expire even in advance. Two important um, case study just to, to be immediately jumped in the industrial application. The first one is the thermoset cylinder. It's a type four cylinder. You know that there is four, five different type of cylinder type from type one to type five. This is a type four cylinder with an inner volume of 6.8 liter and a max allowable working pressure of 300 bar. Two ball was introduced in the resin system formulation. It's a filament wind application. And the key benefits are really outstanding. We got a weight reduction on 40%. It means that now this cylinder is the lightest cylinder in the world. And on top, we passed even the TOU, we passed our customer passes the TUV certification. On the, um, on the right bottom, you can get this QR code. You can use the QR code just to um, download the, in our YouTube channel, the presentation of our customer about this and, and outstanding result it got during uh, our Naum event in 2019. Second application is just for bike frame. We know that the weight above all for sport bike is a really crucial problem. And we got some massive requests how to reduce the weight of the bike frame. And in this case, we use this approach with graphene nanotubes just to get this weight reduction of the frame, but on top some relevant and interesting properties enhancement like flexural modulus uh, increased up to 50% and even the hammer impact a special standard a special test for the for the for the um, bike frame got this uh, enhancement plus 14%. So I'm going to introduce some recent results of our R&D activities on this topic about mechanical reinforcement. First of all, um, let me describe which is our current approach. We have different targeted system. The first one was the 2K epoxy C liquid the bisphenol A with curing agent. And we are going to validate this approach with glass fiber and carbon fiber for the time being produced only via hand layup. Our target and potential application are different. Filament winding, as I explained before, on top of what we are going to propose as electrical conductivity, now mechanical reinforcement is crucial. So filament winding, protrusion for rebound, bars, beam uh, profiles, and layup for different kinds of application and even pre-preg. Our approach um, went or is going thanks to two different uh, possibilities. The first one is a tailor-made approach when we are going to produce with the target raising, we are going to get this raising sample from our 
customer or prospect. And we are going to produce this concentrate master batch made with 1% of tubal in their own resin, just to get the best chemical compatibility and the best dispersion quality. On top of that, some customer needs a sort of more general approach. So we designed this specific grade of tubal matrix, tubal matrix 216 beta. It's a one weight percent of tubal master batch based on a very standard bisphenol A. So the epoxy equivalent to H should be between 180, 119. Grams equivalent. So this is our current approach, or to get material from our customer to support their development with our tubal research center, or with the very standard tubal matrix. Those are a sort of uh, currently achievement in terms of result. In this work, carbon fiber composites and uh, two baltubal was mixed in the resin system, is a 2K epoxy resin system. So the reason the system was filled with, uh, with, with two ball in the range of 0.05 weight percent of tubal, the active material. We use it uh, in a hand layup approach and um, a very standard carbon fiber, um, unidirectional carbon fiber, and this uh, standard epoxy resin system. And some results are really, really interesting. One of the main one is just the fracture toughness, the um, how to just the, the, the free energy rate, release rate, we got this improvement up to 52% in terms of fracture toughness. So just the dogma for composite material, how to reduce the fracture, the, the, the crack propagation, as I discussed it in advance, it just got this very promising result that's pushed us to pursue this kind of path right now. Okay, this is just a, um, a graph where the fracture toughness and so this, um, this energy release rate is expressed as a decrease in total potential energy is a function on the lamination length. And you can see the, the, the green spot is just the control system, the reference without two ball, and the blue spot is Raising modified with 0.0 weight percent of tubal our graphene nanotubes. And you can see how we can uh, extend the, the lamination land just with the same um, energy release rate. So it's a very impressive result, I would say, up to, to modify to get this 50% uh, enhancement of these special properties for mechanical reinforcement. This is a very nice picture, I would say. You can see on the left side, just the neat composite, resin and fiber. And on the right side, what we are going, what we modified with only 0.08% of tubal and how tubal create a sort of bridge between the fiber inside the resin just to enhance the interlaminar shear as well and even the fracture toughness. So this continuous redirection of the crack enable to reduce the fracture, the <clears throat> to enhance the fracture toughness resistant. Let me just go into the conclusion. I hope these, uh, all the information um, were quite clear for you, but you can get this possibility to, to place all the question during the presentation and Dimitri is able to reply. And just at the end of the presentation, the stage should be yours. So you can place each kind of question, technical or commercial question you need to, to get. Some few words about our company, Oxiel. Oxiel was founded in 2009. Now, currently we got up to 105,000 customers all over the world. We have a very nice team with more than 70 scientists in 20 different countries. And we got more than 60 patents and patent application. We are the only company we are able to produce on industrial scale graphene nanotubes, single wall carbon, so-called single wall carbon nanotubes. And just to give a, a tips, just a, a very short insight, 97% of the global production capacity of single wall carbon nanotubes in 2020 was in the end of Oxial. As I mentioned before, we are working on to, to 
support our customer as best as we can. So we opened during the last five years, three different tuber research center to develop production technologies and new material prototyping and on top to support our prospect and customer development. The first one was open in uh, Novosibirsk, where our main manufacturing plant is located. The second one in Shanghai in 2019. And on the last one in Luxembourg, where is our um, headquarters in Europe in 2020. Main focus on thermoset, thermoplastic and elastomer and silicon application. Our global organization, just the, 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 um, the orange spot are our current production sites, one in Novosibirsk and the second one is building now in Luxembourg. We got three different tuba research center, the violet spot, and our offices, representative office, and our distribution supply chain all over the world. We are able to serve all the customer all over the world because our pre we are present in more than 20 countries with more than, as I mentioned before, 420 employees. As the last slide, we are rich registered, so we are able, we are allowed to commercialize uh, up to 100 tons per year of graphene nanotubes in Europe. And so we are the first and the only graphene nanotubes completed this path. And oh, on top, we are, oh, we are even APA, Environmental Production Agency registered, which allows us to sell in US uh, the, this kind of product. So, that's that's it for my for my side so far. Well, just um, short information, short practical information. Just to get this uh, presentation and all the information you need, please drop an email to this uh, email address: webinar at oxial.com. Uh, I and my colleagues will be able to reply to all your question and all your needs. And on top, you can get in touch with our technician directly and we can get all the material, all the papers you need according to what I have presented so far. Well, thank you so much. Now the stage is yours. So please go ahead with your question, if you may have one. Thank you, Roberto. Um... As I mentioned in the beginning, if you want to ask uh, verbal questions, uh, just please raise your hands by using the raise hand function and we will uh, activate your microphone. Parallelly, I see that the first questions in the chat drop in and Dimitri uh, is able to answer them. So um, gentlemen and ladies, um, <laughs> if there are any questions, please feel free to ask Roberto right now or- Don't be, uh, don't be shy. First don't be all. don't be shy exactly <laughs> don't if, be shy if an italian yeah. says don't be shy come on <laughs> <laughs> just ask your questions uh, we still have uh, plenty of time left and um also as roberto said please drop him a mail at webinar at oxial.com uh, and you get the presentation and all further details you ask for so um, best possibility to get in touch right away based on this uh, web seminar yeah, because not only the presentation, but even some specific materials they might need. Because as I mentioned, we developed this tubal matrix and tubal matrix needs to be, you know, needs some uh, processing guidelines to be followed just to get the best dispersion. Because one of the key, the crucial point to get all these performances, to enable all these performances I just mentioned before is the good dispersion level of graphene nanotubes in your, in the guest material, in the host material, sorry. So that's why it's really important important to get in touch with all with me and with my colleagues at technician to get all the guidelines and all the recommendation to to proper disperse tubal and tubal matrix is your own raising system so that's important to highlight okay you obviously answered all the questions already okay. there we have uh... yeah and there First one, Enda. Yes, let me unmute. Okay, hi, do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. So, first of all, thanks a lot for this very nice presentation. Uh, Thank you. Roberto, you gave us a glimpse into the future, I have to say. Uh, 
Yes, for sure. And I've been waiting for this. I, indeed, for many years, like like 20 years ago, my colleagues at physics department in the US were working on nanotubes. I was assuming if one day we will see them in industrial scale. So now we are almost there, apparently. Uh, we are there, I so would say. It's uh, really great to see and I'm quite impressed. I'm going to buy immediately shares of your company after the meeting is finished. <laughs> uh, That's so good. Just a question. You, at the beginning, you mentioned about the resistivity reduction, but if I'm not wrong, I understand you only talked about surface applications like spray or paint. No, 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 okay. no. It's, uh, we, we are going to get volume resistivity and surface resistivity. It depends of the final okay. application and the final, uh, how to say, area of, um, of the different composite part. First of all, you are going to disperse tubal in your own resin. So you can get resistivity in the bulk and you can get resistivity on top. So it depends on which kind of level of resistivity, volume or surface, we are going to, to, to get as a target, as a final target. That's why we need to get in touch with customer to, um, to, to precise which kind of final target and to give them our recommendation. But for sure, you can get resistivity or conductivity, anti-static and conductive properties as a surface or volume resistivity. That's for sure. Uh, you know, one issue with composites is, uh, or composite structures is, you know, we are far away from metallic like aluminum structures. I'm talking for aerospace at least. Yeah. Do you see any chance there to come close to the level of uh, aluminum? I mean, maybe definitely not exactly, but well, uh, how it's far just, we will be? I would say that it's a term of balance. Maybe Dimitri may reply better than me, but it's a matter of balance between metal performances and weight performances. Obviously, with metal, you can get a very high weight part compared with the usage of graphene antibodies where well, the weight reduction is one of the main target. Progressively, uh, the, the, we are getting close to some performances, but maybe Dimitri can add something on top. Just to compare and give a feeling. Yeah. But yeah. okay, thanks a lot. This was my question. Thanks a lot for the Thank you. nice presentation. Yeah. Dimitri? Uh, yeah, so Ivan, hello everyone, my name is Dmitry. I'm the head of uh, Oxel's uh, R&D department, which works with thermostat thermoplastic materials. So yeah, briefly to answer your questions, we have a certain understanding in some areas, of course, where we can replace the metal. Uh, that's uh, about the composite applications, for example, related to the automotive industry. Uh, and even for, for example, for the electrical vehicles, it's important to always reduce the weight in order to give uh, higher mileage. Uh, so in our experience, uh, for example, it's just the recent example to be more illustrative that in our research, internal researchers, we have found, for example, in the carbon fiber pre composites, uh, we can, if we speak about, for example, 10 layered pre part, uh, so we can introduce our nanotube in the resin, and by doing this, we can uh, preserve the same uh, strength performance when even if we reduce one of the layers. So we'll make a <coughs> nine of the composite, or, and it will have the same uh, strengths as the 10 layered unmodified composite. So in this case, we will reduce the weight by 10%. So it's, and it's not the limit, depends on the concentration uh, and the cost of property, of course, but in the working range, uh, the, the weight reduction could be quite uh, significant, even up to 20% by weight. So when comparing to metals, of course, the metals are more, have higher density and it's, it's not even the question about our nanotubes, it's the substitution of metals by the composite materials. I think that's, and, and in the composite materials, we're currently even improving the performance of these materials. So the composites, they usually have a lower density, like three or five times lower density than metals. So they are clearly outstanding in this point of view. Well, maybe there are some some question in the chat. I don't know if Dimitri has already replied. For example, yeah, let's, uh, let's, 
I, I how, how do you yeah. yes, maybe how I do you supply for example as liquid or dust some academic letters are written difficulty of mixture of dust for we are going to supply tubal matrix tubal matrix a concentrate with the 10 percent 5 percent or two percent of tubal inside with a, with a specific carrier so this enabled you to get a very easy way of dispersion we supply like a flake form or pellet form it's depend of the different tubal series for the we have series 200 and 300 for thermoset series 600 for elastomer and series 800 for thermoplastic so we this enabled you to to easily disperse but you need to follow precisely and it's important to remark precisely our process guideline to get the best quality of dispersion you can so this is a, just a reply and the second one is the processes that you have shown smc poltrusion all have rather short infiltration path with longer infiltration, things of longer wind blades with the graphene nanos will withheld like a filter. Well, maybe Dimitri can reply better than me in this case because we, we got some different uh, tests with, uh, with the filter, with the infusion or our RTM, for example. Yeah, I can answer this question. Actually, I understand, for example, for the wind blades where you have even 100 layers of uh, the glass fabric, there is a high risk of infiltration. Uh, and previously, we have also observed in the lab that we had uh, an infiltration effect when we do the, uh, the infusion of uh, the resin in the composite. So, uh, and that's, uh, we had figured out the solution for this problem uh, is uh, the improvement, the dispersion quality of the CNT that helps uh, and more precisely is the shortening of the bundle size of the CNT or even creation the single standing CNT and the resin. So this is more hardly to achieve of course, but uh, that is the solution for the infiltration issue when the nanotube size and the nanotube bundle or agglomerate size becomes uh, less than 10 microns uh, in length, uh, there is no infiltration issues because the, the nanotubes just don't fill the, uh, don't fill these gaps between the filaments. So they pass easily. Of course, it depends on the concentration because uh, nanotubes, they also can give some thixotropic effect and viscosity in increasing effect. But this is the latest development, which uh, Roberto recently mentioned, the matrix 216. It's specially developed with shortened type of tubal, uh, tubal bundles, which do not increase the viscosity too much and pre most probably will uh, perform much better at the infusion processes. So, yeah, well, we didn't test here, but I, I'm sure that they will perform much better than normal concentrate that we have previously. Yeah, and another another question is just what reference of tubal we need to use for improved mechanical conductivity properties for epoxy raising. Okay, we need to split, as I mentioned before, uh, electrical conductivities from mechanical reinforcement. For electrical conductivity, we develop different kind of tubal matrix series 200 and 300. For epoxy raising, basically you can get 201 and 301 for epoxy raising, and for uh, vinyl ester and polyester raising 204 as I mentioned before. For mechanical performances, you need to approach differently. We develop, as Dimitri mentioned just right now, tubal matrix 216 beta, but even the tailor-made approach is possible. So because we are targeting mechanical reinforcement more tailored, we are more focusing on the specific need, um, please, um, get in touch with us directly so we can discuss easily which is the best grade to use. Sorry, I mean, I'm just getting back to your question and uh, maybe Dimitri is able to reply. I have a question regarding to settlement problem. Let's say we have a good dispersion of graphene nanotubes and mix it with the resin matrix. During process, did you have a chance to check the settlement of the product? Uh, yes, yeah, so here uh, we definitely have a lot of information 
so of course this the sedimentation behavior depends on the viscosity of the epoxy resin the temperature of the mixture uh, during the processing and uh, of course if we're speaking about the solvent based system the presence of solvent and the solvent type but in general in the thermoset if you speak about the solvent free systems we do not have uh, strong issues with the uh, sedimentation in the epoxy resins for example uh, because the viscosity uh, of 1000 uh, cps and higher usually do not uh, have the this sedimentation issue just because the stabilization of nanotubes by the resin itself uh, but uh, yeah if we want to if we speak about the low viscosity systems and the, if we speak about the low nanotube dosages where the nanotubes can uh, really agglomerate uh, so here we have a certain recommendation about the additives which can help nanotubes to be stabilized so we had also the guideline, which has the list of some helpful additives for different producers, which have, for example, for the uh, suspension stability, uh, some thixotropic additives, which do not uh, also have the degradation of conductive properties, for example, because not all the additives are, are very well performing with uh, single wall carbon nanotubes because some of them can absorb on the surface of nanotubes and insulate them from each other if you're speaking about the electrical conductivity application. So yeah, definitely we know the solution, but here we need to talk about the particular systems have some description of the ingredients, the process. So we can definitely answer you more precisely if you give us more information about your system and your problem. Yeah. Uh, another question is what equipment is recommended to be used by you? Is just regular industrial mixer or something more specific theory? No, as I mentioned before, you can get the very standard equipment like a high speed mixer, like a cowless plate. What you need to use is just um, so you can keep your uh, standard equipment and standard process with some adjustment, obviously, for your formulation. But basically, it's, uh, it's a standard approach. And you can get all this information about equipment. Just drop me, a, drop us a message, and I will. Re we will reply with our processing guidelines and all the recommendation, as Dimitri mentioned. We can provide the standard one, but even more. When you have some specific topic to discuss, it's better to get in touch with our technician, with me, and with my colleagues, just to just to set a short meeting or a short e-meeting. Unfortunately, now everything is remotely yet, but we will see and um, but on the other hand we are able to provide you all the the, the 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 information you need i guess that there is another written question let me see okay we produce grp pipe using polyester resin with continuous filament winding method do you have any experience related to grp pipe application and if yes what was the mixing rate well, we have several customers that currently we develop a tech, you know, filament winding technology for pipes and tank. And uh, for the mixing, the mixing rate is well described in our processing guidelines. It depends of the of, of the of the dimension, the, the size of the blade, the size of the tank, every kind of um, dispersion quality is related to this processing guideline. So please uh, Siat, uh, I'm not sure that I'm pr pronounced well, but is, please drop us an, a message with, um, uh, drop us an email so you can get all the needed information just in a written form. Uh, another question I say, uh, so let me scroll up. Is Justice Oxel a private or public company? Is a private company. And okay, I guess that we replied so far to all the written question, if I'm not wrong. Please let yeah. me know if we skip it some. Yeah, some Robert, I have the question which we skipped about the pyrolysis process. Oh, oh okay, sorry, sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, uh, the question was regarding the recyclability. Uh, will the CNT survive in the pyrolysis and can contaminate the recovered fibers? 
or even co cause the further problems, health or environmental issues. So the question from Walling. So I can answer also as well for this question. Uh, so the, for the pyrolysis process, uh, uh, it's quite simple. So the pyrolysis process happens at the temperatures about 600 degrees usually, uh, or even higher. So our CNT have clear uh, TGA indication about their stability at the temperatures in the air or in the inert atmosphere, but they speak about the pyrolysis in the air atmosphere. The our nanotubes start to burn at the temperature 450 degrees Celsius. So at these temperatures, they start to burn and completely burn out to CO2 and, uh, and water. So definitely will not survive this process and they will disappear. There is another question. Have you ever compared the performance of graphene nanotubes versus graphene sheets? Yeah, I also can have uh, some information. So uh, we haven't done these tests yet because we have, we actually do not even receive the graphene in the amount so that we can reproduce the same tests which we do with our graphene nanotubes. I don't know, simply maybe because of the availability of graphene sheets I and mean, the pure graphene sheets are quite expensive, not massively produced. And even one gram is not, was not uh, ever in our lab. So we had some, of course, some milligram samples for just some more specific studies, but for the composite applications, we haven't compared them face to face. Well, I can add that generally speaking, because the graphene nanotube is a 3D structure with some land and the nine diameter, it's more flexible, so it's easier to get in touch one to each other. Just for just talking about electrical conductivity properties, we need to build this 3D structure inside, and with that with that three dimension structure like graphene nanotube is a single wall. It means that it's really flexible. You are enable to build these uh, these structures structure more easier to the to the graphene sheets, I would say, because that two dimension structure. So in principle, we haven't done as um, Dimitri remarked uh, previously, but from in principle, graphene nanotubes should enable you better, the graphene should work better than graphene sheet just for this three, 3D network and 3D, 3D structure. Uh, what scale are the CNT made at made at in production? Vladimir. Uh, uh, actually, I didn't understand the question. The scale what, what scale? what scale are the CNTs made at in production? The, I guess that they mean uh, which capability or which production capability we got so far, if I'm not wrong. Please, Martin, may you? Ah, what are your quality control tests? 1K a day, 100K a day. Uh, quality control tests for the product for the powder, I, yeah. I guess. So for the powder, we have a standard quality control tests they are following. It's TGA, so we measure the ash content we measure the iron content because as you know, our synthesis involves the use of the iron catalyst. So our powder contains some particles of iron. So there are also some purified grades without uh, iron. Uh, so the next test is a, is a Raman spectrometry. So this is a special test which indicates the quality of the uh, nanotubes, so single wall nanotubes. They have a specific profile in the Raman spectrum, so we can differentiate if, for example, our reactor uh, oxid accidentally starts uh, to make a wrong type of nanotubes, we immediately will see this on this uh, Raman spectrum. So there are additional tests like my uh, scanning electron microscopy, so we also check all our batches on the scanning electron microscopy, and just to be sure that the surface is uh, uh, the morphology of the bundles, the nanotubes, uh, is also similar. 
Yeah, and we have also some a few tests on the demand, such as elemental analysis, uh, EDX. So I think now we are doing it for all the batches as well. Another question, is it necessary in the manufacture of composite with nanotubes to use elastomers and what? Do you mean elastomer for a toughness agent as an additional, as an hybrid solution or why? In or is um, just to clarify your question, because basically we don't need to combine elastomer with graphene nanotubes, but to be honest, I did not get the purpose of the usage of elastomer unless we are talking about as a elastomer for a toughness agent. May you use the your microphone, Inor? No. Yeah, Roberto, we also skipped uh, one question. Please I go ahead. The question from JPG. So, hello, what is the reference tubule we need to use to improve mechanical or conductivity? No, I, I replied. I replied. I yeah, yeah, I replied. Okay. Yes, I just asked it to get in touch. Even I gave some standard reference for epoxy, like 201, 301, uh, and uh, 204 for vinyl ester, polyester, 202 for PU, 301 for PU as well. But uh, yeah. for mechanical approach, we, do, we need to discuss further. Okay, so I don't see any other questions. We have answered all the questions in chat. So yeah. if you haven't, please correct. No, I guess that we, oh no, there is another one. What about safety of using tubal single work carbon nanotubes? Are there any special condition for workers? Extrusion line. So for the for the applications in extrusion, if you're speaking about the extrusion is mostly often used in the thermoplastic materials. So we offer uh, the nanotubes which are embedded in special carriers. So for example, if you're speaking about such polymers like polyethylene, polypropylene, polyamide, ABS, basically all thermoplastic polymers, uh, we have developed the special products for each polymer so this is a nanotube concentrate, which is compatible to this uh, with this polymer. So this CNT in these states, they are quite, they are completely safe. They are not being released out, out, out of this matrix and can be used in the extrusion lines with the normal feeders, normal feeding equipment or mixing with the granules with any type of mixing equipment. And additionally, do single wall carbon nanotubes degradate during multiple twin screw extrusion? Can they be cutted in extruder? Uh, yeah, so uh, here the reply is definitely no, because the scales of the extrusion and the shear geometry of the flow in the extrusion is not sufficient for destroying the nanotubes so it's yeah. completely larger scale than nanotubes are so they uh, basically they don't feel they don't see the extruder uh, shears which are created inside because they are much much uh, higher than nanotubes itself so we yes. haven't seen any degradation but of course there, there are definitely some dependencies for example the conductivity can depend on the screw speed uh, of extrusion or the configuration of the blades but not because the nanotubes uh, are destroying for example if you mix to make uh, multiple uh, extrusions uh, the nanotubes can cover uh, with the polymer more efficiently on the other hand it can bring more improved mechanical properties but on the other hand the conductivity may be uh, will degrade, degrade a little bit, maybe one order of magnitude, not completely disappear, but we have clearly see that there is a dynamics about the influence of these parameters. So, Powell, you need to, to test a single wall because they tested multi-wall, but they got some problem with the high viscosity impact and loss of fiber formation. So you need definitely to, to try with the single wall. 
That's my personal advice. Any other question? Because I guess that we reply to all the questions. We are almost at uh, noon. So just to wrap up, um, if you need any additional information or in order to get the presentation, please drop an email to the web, to the um, email address webinar at oxial.com. So we received uh, directly all the requests and I will be able to reply shortly.